Hello, my name is Thomas Green, and today I will be talking about Shakespeare. You know, that one guy that wrote the play way back in the day, but specifically, The Merchant of Venice, which was written in the late 1500s, and in this play, a merchant by the name of Antonio is in need of money. He asks for a loan from Shylock, the Jew. This is when all the conflict begins to unravel. Shylock is influenced by the prejudiced belief that he faces and finds himself battling with mercy and justice in a predominantly Christian environment. So the play opens with Bassanio, a good friend of Antonio, who is low on money at the beginning of the play. And so he asks his good friend and a wealthy merchant, Antonio, for a loan in order to travel to the home of Portia, the princess of Beaumont, whom he loves and hopes to win her hand in marriage. Antonio is the protagonist of the play. He is a Christian merchant in the city of Venice, Italy. Being the merchant of Venice, he is really the namesake of the play. He has a good reputation for being generous and kind. It is mentioned that he even had, had paid off other people's debt for no additional cost. When people are in need, sounds like a nice guy, right? Anyways, there's one problem. Antonio's money is tied up in the merchant ship, so having no cash to directly lend to Bassanio, Antonio advises him to ask for a loan from the Jewish merchant, Shylock, and he uses his name as collateral. Shylock is the main antagonist of the play. He is a Jewish merchant and a money lender who is discriminated against by the large Christian community in Venice. He loves money more than anything and is seen as a greedy, selfish, and vengeful person. Through the play, it is hard to tell if he is just a regular villain or just a lonely Jew who has been persecuted his whole life. His wife even died a few years ago before the play takes place. What a poor guy, am I right? So, uh... Shylock, he agrees to lend the money, but under one condition. If Antonio fails to pay the bond back in three months, then I'll have to pay the loan with his own flesh. That's brutal, right? Well, Antonio must have done something really bad to make Shylock so mad. And so with the legal bond all written up, the money is loaned, and Bassanio travels out with Portia using this money to try to meet and win her marriage. So he takes part in a contest to win Portia's hand in marriage. This test is an elaborate attempt of Portia's father to control who she marries, even after he's dead. Like, wow, imagine having a father like that. So Bassanio chooses the lead casket, which has engraved on it, who chooseth me must hazard and give all he hath. This is actually the correct casket. So this means that Antonio wins this contest and actually gets a merry portion. The three months pass and word is out that Antonio's ships have sunk, which is a bummer because that is his lifeline. He is unable to repay the loan and Shylock demands payment and the issue is brought to a court of law. Bassanio gets a goodbye letter from Antonio that describes his terrible misfortune and how he is bound to die in court. Bassanio leaves Portia and has to go to Venice and tries to save Antonio. Without Bassanio's knowledge, Portia and her maid disguise themselves as male lawyers and also set off to Venice to help Antonio. In court, Shylock is persistent in his demands for Antonio's flesh and even turns down an offer of three times the amount of money originally lent. Using her quick intelligence and wit, Portia saves day by explaining to Shylock that the bond specifies an exact pound. No more or less. To be cut with no bloodshed. If he can't satisfy these requirements, his own life will be forfeit. This would be impossible. And Shylock, being a fairly smart man, realizes this and quickly backpedals, asking for the original sum of the bond. But Portia explains that since he has plotted to bring death to a Venetian citizen, which is a felony in and of itself, the court tells him that he must give half his wealth to the state and the other to Antonio. This would leave Shylock with nothing. Shylock nearly begs for mercy, which is a bit ironic due to his actions of a few minutes ago. And Antonio? Living up to his good name shows Shylock mercy. He requests that instead of getting anything from Shylock, he, in return, must convert to Christianity and will the rest of his estate to his daughter, Jessica, and her new Christian husband, Lorenzo. In the end, they all return to Belmont where Portia reveals her disguise. And they've got word that the rumor about Antonio's ships being damaged was not true. They all celebrate in their good fortune. To conclude this episode of Shakespeare and Literature, ultimately Merchant of Venus, which illustrates the consequences of greed and desire for vengeance. There has been a modern recreation of this film, 
as the play, which was created in 2004. It's a great movie that sticks to the script identically. I've watched it myself, I recommend it to you all. I click the link in the description. Go check it out, man. Thank you again for watching, and as we say in our hometown, don't forget to be awesome.